I welcome you to Doc City's webinar and EM Lyon for the MSc in Luxury Management and Marketing. I will leave the floor to you, Mr. Fan. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. And uh, my name is Michel Fan. I'm a professor of luxury marketing at EM Lyon Business School in France. I'm based in Paris right now. And uh, as you can see, we are all confined in our home. So this is actually, I'm broadcasting from my home. Um, today, I'm very pleased to present you the pr uh, program called Master of Science in Luxury Management and Marketing our, at our school. So first, I want to start with uh, presenting you uh, the, my team. So my team is uh, made of uh, Berenice Loiseau. She's our program uh, coordinator. She's in charge of you know, uh, all the pedagogical issues uh, related to the school and the program and the students. I have also uh, Florence Rollet. She's also um, our pedagogical operation manager. She also helped me with you know, the selection process of the candidates, the interviews, uh, you know, various, uh, and she also coaching our students in uh, one of the module as well, and myself, okay? And so just to give you an idea of how our, our program is made up, is our program is very international. So this year for the class of 2019-2021, we have 90 students. We've made up from 83% of them are female. So mostly girls. And this percentage has not changed for the last 10 years. Because uh, I don't know why, but the majority of uh, people applying for the program are mostly women. So we have only a minority of uh, male ap applicants only in uh, each year. And we have 22 nationalities as the first nationalities. So if many of them have also a second nationality as well. So if you add the sec their second nationalities, we end up having 31 nationality in this year. So that's a lot. We have students from South America, North America, Africa, North Africa, even we have one lady from South Africa this year. Uh, we have uh, Middle East, we have Lebanese, uh, then we have also Russian, we have uh, Asian uh, continent as well, Chinese, uh, South Asia, and you name it. And non-French uh, non uh, students represent 50% of the cohort, so it's a very good balance. And the age, average age of the, uh, the students this year is 22 years old. And, but the, the, the gap between the youngest and the oldest one is quite large because the youngest one is 21 and the oldest one is 32. So um, it shows that we welcome a lot of different profile, different people who have with a lot of experience, those who don't have experience, all are eligible to apply for the program. So I would go through very quickly some key stages of the program. So we have um, the first semester called S1. So the first semester, we, you are based in Paris at our Paris campus, right in a city center. We are in the District 12, for those who know Paris. We are just uh, located opposite of Gare de Lyon in Paris. Very convenient to access a uh, lot of shops and uh, restaurants around it. And so that you, you stay there from the September to end of December, that's the first term. You have a midterm break in between. Then the second term is start from early January to end of March. And so for this second term, you have three choices. You can choose only one. So you can go for either London at London at College of Fashion, or you can go to New York at New York at the new, new school, the called New School and uh, specifically uh, that's a school, Boston School of Design. And, or you can go to Rome, and this is uh, a partnership with the Louis Business School in Rome. If you have some Italian in the audience, you probably know this school very well. It's one of the top Italian uh, business school in, in, Ital in Italy. And you can choose, uh, so you, you go there for one uh, term, so from January to end of March. And then after that, we start the, Third, uh, the third semester in Shanghai, and th that you would be also studying at our campus in uh, EM Young campus in Shanghai. We are located in right in the city center, also Shanghai. Very convenient uh, to access. 
And then you have to do that internship. After Shanghai, you usually you go for internship from July to December for six months maximum or minimum four months because it depends on some countries. You can find some internship, uh, like a shorter internship of four months, and that's in, uh, good enough for us. So from four to six months internship anywhere in the world, as long as you have to work in luxury company, yet, of course. And then you have to write a master dissertation. You can write it alone or in a group of two or three maximum. And you have to submit at the end of the uh, process a dissertation of a report of 60 pages, around 60 pages. And plus you have to do the oral defense of 20 minutes, uh, oral, individual oral defense in front of the jury. Okay, that's if you complete all that, you are eligible to graduate. So in detail of the program, I don't want to go too much in detail because I think that um, you give you an idea of what's uh, the content of each uh, semester, but you, usually the first semester you have a lot of what called foundation courses, uh, the mass semester in Paris, because we do have students from very different backgrounds, from engineering, from design, from fashion, from uh, sciences, uh, from law, so on. So many of you have never been studying uh, business before. So with the first semester, we try to give you some key foundation courses like uh, research methodologies, um, su uh, supply chain management, fundamental of legal, consumer lifestyle, cost control management, and so on and so on. So these are the course that all gear towards your future career in the luxury industry. They're all relevant for your career, of course. And we do also have some language classes in the first semester in Paris for those who are not French speakers. We, uh, we offer you the, to start um, the Mandarin classes, Chinese Mandarin classes at the, for the beginner's level. If you have an advanced level of Mandarin, you might not be uh, needing to start your Mandarin class in Paris, but you can do uh, Mandarin classes at advanced level in Shanghai. In Paris, we have only uh, beginner's level. And for the Chinese uh, students, we require them to speak, uh, to learn French, beginners of intermediate uh, level of French. And those who are neither French or Chinese, they can choose either one. You can choose to learn French or Chinese depend on your personal uh, preference, okay? And then we move to the second semester. Second semester, so you have the choice between Parkson, New York or London or Rome. So in each track, we have very different classes, different courses, and the number of courses are very varies also from different track because uh, the American system and the British system or the Italian system are not the same at all. So uh, the number of courses are not the same, but what's important is what you learn throughout the semester. So in New York, the track is more specialized in for those who are not interested in fashion. So we, I'm, I know that many of our applicants, they prefer to do something else and just relate to the fashion business. So this is going to be an interesting track for them. So in the in New York track, you learn like your new design firms, for example, the, the, the new design firms, we talk about more about service firms and service design firms as well. And you have a class on about sustainable, sustainable business models. So sustainable business model, it doesn't talk about only sustainability in terms of environmental issues, but how to make the business uh, sustainable in mid term of lasting over a long period of time. And then you have a course called Theorizing Luxury with one of the uh, main professors from Parson, it's called David Brody. He's a very excellent professor to teach you about what really lu what luxury means and so on. So this is a very interesting track for those who want to, um, to not specialize in fashion. For those who are interested in fashion business related, like I, what I mean by fashion is including, you know, clothing, garments, shoes, accessory, jewelry, uh, perfume, cosmetics. Huh? So those ones that they should choose for the London track. And in London track, you would have classes like um, start your own fashion label. This is a very interesting course because uh, the teacher there, Alison Rowe, she's um, a professional um, consultant. She advised uh, young designers in UK to how to run their fashion business. 
So she come to teach exactly how she, basically how she, 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 she uh, coach the designers. So this is a really interesting course, you know, how to build your own fashion brand. You have a class called you know, Visual Merchandising for Fashion, Innovation in Fashion, uh, British Cultural Studies for Fashion uh, History. Uh, this is a very interesting course, to, uh, what we learn how to, um, different parts of London, how London has a strong influence on the British fashion, for example. It's very interesting. This course, you would be uh, spending most of the time outside than inside, within, rather than inside the classroom because the professor take you to visit different uh, places in London and very interesting. And then you have the track, uh, Rome track. Rome track is again, very different from the New York track, but also pretty more related to uh, fashion as well. Because in, uh, at the Louis, they have a very strong um, uh, competencies in luxury and fashion business. So this track also relates to fashion business and um, you have like business model for fashion industry, you have branding strategy for fashion and product merchandising uh, and so on. So these are the, co the course that are all taught by the professors from Louis Business School. And you would, in the, this track, you would be mixed with those, the, the Italian students from the Louis Business School. So you are having class with them and so it will be great opportunity to make new friends, to develop your network and so on. And then you go to Shanghai. Shanghai, we have a different set of courses. So we go, when you go to Shanghai, the course are a bit more specialized. So we have like classes like luxury brand management, luxury retail service operation taught by me, uh, you have a luxury business, consumer behavior, you have a digital marketing for luxury and so on. And you have one component that our students appreciate a lot called in-company consulting project. We call it ICP. This is a part of the component that's really um, very, um, how to say that, highly valuable for our students. Because uh, in this element, you will work as a team of five to six uh, students and you have to work on a real project for the real company. So the project can be mostly related to China, of course, because you will be in China. So the, the project could be like how to bring a new uh, European brand or international brand, luxury brand to China, how to enter the Chinese market, or if the brand already exists in the, in the Chinese market, how to develop the brand, how to build a stronger brand, how to create more brand awareness, or how to attract new consumer segment to the brand and so on. So all the topics are all related to the Chinese market or Chinese consumers in general. So for example, I give you an example that like we have a few years ago, we have a project for a French uh, castle, uh, a French chateau in, in France. And they, the castle, they, they organize like a um, um, long stay with you know, cultural um, visit a wine yard, the wine making and cooking and so on. And they, they gave us a project. So the project was how to attract, you know, Chinese tourists, young Chinese tourists, the millennials, to come to the castle and to stay and to learn more about the French uh, culinary arts or French uh, art de vivre, you know. So this is a very interesting project. But even the, 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 the castle is based in France. And their, their, their main challenge, their topic was how to attract more Chinese tourists to come to visit the Chateau in France. So that could be one example of the topic we have done in ICP in the past. Okay. So when you have done all that, you go back to your home country and you can start your uh, internship and your master dissertation. So the Altogether, you have to get 120 credits ECTS called European Credit Transfer System. So when you get 120 credits, you are eligible to graduate. And we have two possible graduation dates every year. So once is in February and another one in July of the same year. So this is an opportunity for, because not all students will finish uh, their master dissertation on time. So uh, this is why we have two uh, possible graduation dates. And for the courses, all the courses elements, except the master dissertation, you need to get an average at least 10 out of 20 at the end of each term, each, session, each semester, to be able to uh, fulfill the requirement of the program. Okay. 
And finally, um, I want to show you, for those who don't know where the location of the school, we choose the, the school, our partners in a very, um, we choose them very carefully for their quality of their, their teaching. Uh, of course, their, their reputation, the brand, uh, their brand of themselves. And also, you know, the quality of the, you know, the experience when you go to live in those cities as well. In London, for example, I was, the University of Arts London, London College Fashion is part of University of Arts London, and they are located right at Oxford Circus. So those, for those who know London, it's very convenient, uh, just right on Oxford Street and uh, Regent Street. Uh, very easy to, ac uh, to access the school and have many, many shops and uh, restaurants, a cafe around that. And you will be studying there mostly. They have all the campuses, but mostly that you still study at that campus. You have also the Parsons School Design in New York. Also, they locate right on, a, on Manhattan, on the 5th Avenue and the 13th Street. So right the, where the arrow is. So it's very convenient location as well. They have several buildings. The school of um, uh, universe, the new the New York School of uh, Passion School Design. They part of the called the New School. The New School is the name of the university, and under the New School, they have School of Design called Passion School Design. So it's a bit confusing for those who don't know uh, why they call the New School and Passion at the same time. And they have you know several buildings. It is the main building of the school in New York. And last but not least, Louis Business School in Rome. This is probably my, one of my favorite uh, campuses that I've seen ever in my life because it's a, they're located right in the heart of Rome, but in a very, very private, exclusive you know, uh, surrounding. They have the, the building here, they call it Villa Blanc. And it's a, previously it's a, a private home mansion and become a, now become a school, but they're surrounded by a beautiful garden and um, and you have the classroom. They have these are the picture of the, some of the uh, classroom they have, and this is very interesting place to uh, to study. And on the board of the um, the school, they, they have the masters of luxury and fashion. You have very uh, interesting scientific committee. That's why we we partner with them. They are, for example, uh, the president and CEO of Valentino Fashion Group, a part of the, the scientific committee. You have also Ferruccio Fergamo, who's the president of Salvatore Fergamo Group as well. You have also Pietro Beccari, who's the current CEO of Christian Dior Couture in France. He's Italian and he's part of the scientific committee of Louis Business School. So you can see that the school is very highly connected with the luxury fashion industry, not only in Italy, but worldwide. And this is why we make, we, we are very proud to be partner with them. And where our graduates are working now, they work in main mini league groups. And so this is like one of the, I would say it gives you a snapshot of where they are located right now. So they work for all the major luxury groups like LVMH, Keering, Richemont, L'Oreal Lux, Hermes, Chanel. And then they work also for a group like Coty. For those who don't know, but Coty, they're making like a perfume. Uh, they produce a lot of perfume for different fashion brands. Uh, we have also students working, uh, graduates working at Lanvin, Balmain, L'Oréal, Professional, Champagne, uh, Louboutin, also Christian Louboutin. One of, uh, we have uh, students working, the graduates working there now, and or Hyatt uh, Hotel Resort. Okay, and uh, last but not least, so when you join our EM Lyon program, you also get a lot of support from the school. So we have a career workshop uh, right at the beginning of when you start in the first semester in Paris. Each of you will be assigned to a coach, a professional career coach. The coach will help you to prepare your CV, to make your CV look very attractive and um, to help you to prepare for, you know, uh, your interview for your internship and so on. So that would be very interesting that the coach will be there to help you to, to develop your, your market um, employability. We have also uh, events when we have luxury groups of brands uh, coming to our campus in Paris because we are right in, a, in the heart of Paris, so it's very easy access for them. And they come to present the company and opportunities to our students. And of course, the aim is to also to recruit our students to, for, in, for their internships. And we also have a, 
our alumni network, many our uh, alumni now working in luxury group. They also, um, some, uh, many of them send me, uh, you know, sometimes their job offers, their internship offers directly to me. Instead of uh, sending the, 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 to the, the job market, they send it to me and I share that with the, our students. And you have the privilege, you know, to have direct access to those opportunities through our alumni. And also we have uh, many of our students when they, during, um, when they finish their internship, they got offered right away the full-time position because a six month internship, as you probably can guess, is a very good opportunity for the company to assess you, to evaluate who you are, your competencies. And if they can if they see that you are very competent, then they will not hesitate to offer you right, uh, right away a full-time contract after that. And for those who don't speak French and who like to go find an internship in Paris, my advice to you is to learn French as quickly as possible. And you need to get like a basic conversational French to be able to have access to internship in France. Because even those groups that are international groups that what you want to do, you want to work in France, in Paris mostly, you need to know how to con uh, converse, how to go to meeting, discussing things in French with their colleagues. And that is a minimum requirement. You don't have to speak perfect French, but the basic conversational French uh, is enough. Okay, so be prepared for it if you plan to, uh, to have a career in France. And that's it for me. So I'm now open to your questions. Great, thank you so much, Professor Fan. That was really interesting. We have quite a few questions, and as I was saying, quite a few participants. So I'm going to try to gather them together by theme. Um, so <clears throat> I guess the first one um, would be, since we're already in April, can people apply still for the September intake, 2020 that is? Of course. We have uh, several um, application uh, sessions. Right now, we just closed our third session, which was like uh, two days ago. But our fourth session is open very soon. So uh, our fourth session will be like in this month, April. So you, we have up to, I think it's the end of June, you can apply. So you can apply until end of June. So we, when you apply, you... We, we, we can share with you, uh, maybe Julia can share with you the contact that our um, admission officer, her name is Ilona Vosches, and she can uh, give you all the detail of how to apply uh, our program. Great. Um, I would like to remind our participants, uh, as you were mentioning contacts, that we're going to send an email with the recording of the webinar, uh, some extra information and the contacts for, for applicants to, to apply directly. Um, there was actually a question about the presentation, if the PowerPoint can be shared with, with the participants. Is that a possibility? Well, no, because uh, I, I, I don't want to share with that because uh, there are some like the numbers of uh, the student profile and, um, and the content of the program as well. I don't want to share that. Of but, course. Um, if, I mean, you, if you want some specific question, you can email me or you can email Ilona, but um, most of the information are on our website. And in our brochure as well, we have a brochure, online brochure as well. You can download the in, uh, online brochure. Okay, great. Um, still about applications. Uh, do you receive many of them per year? How many, what's the ratio more or less between? <laughs> I can tell you that this year we have amazingly a high number of applicants. So usually each year we have between 300 and 350 applicants. And we take about 90 uh, to 100 students. Wow. Okay. So uh, it's about one third. I will give you ratio one third. So one every three uh, applicants can get in. Okay. Wonderful. So I guess it's uh, only special ones that can get in. Yes. Um, so you said already, um, this is a question about languages. Yes. Um, are there options for Mandarin and French classes as well as Italian, or do people have to have the, the right level before they apply? Uh, for, 
like, like, like I said earlier, we, the, the whole program is taught in English. So even our uh, partner at, in Rome, the classes you would take in Italy would be all entirely taught in English. So this is uh, the only like, or language requirement. Then all the language like French, for example, we offer French classes in Paris for non-French speakers, for those who want to learn more about the French language, could be like beginners or more advanced level. So that would help you to maybe to survive in Paris for three months, you know, because you <laughs> need to know how to go buy your groceries, how to do you know, your shop shopping and living in Paris. So this is why we, we offer that classes. Okay. But if you have a better level French before you join the program, it's even better. That's not a problem at all. And for the Chinese language, we offer the Chinese beginners classes only in Paris. And then when you go to Shanghai, we have opportunity to offer more advanced level of Chinese because we have more teachers in Shanghai. So we can have like a intermediate level of Chinese uh, if you have a better level of Chinese language, of course. For Italian and all the languages, we don't offer those classes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, a person was asking about the coaches you mentioned. Is it specific to this program or is it something that happens in all of the courses at EM Lyon? It's very, uh, it's common to all um, called Masters of Science uh, program in, in, in LEM Lyon, yeah. So if you join any of our Masters of Science program in like uh, in sports industry, luxury, or digital marketing and so on, you will get a, assigned to a coach, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. um, so a few persons were asking about the internships. Um, yeah. So someone was asking if uh, they need to have works in luxury before uh, applying. Oh, before applying for the program? Yes. Yeah. Well, if you can, I would advise you strongly because, you know, our main goal also for you is to be employable by the company later on. So, of course, when you, you do the massive uh, luxury at Yem Lyon, you give a very interesting um, uh, value on your CV. But if you can have previous experience in luxury industry, could be in retail or any position, before you join the program, it's even better. It makes your CV even stronger, more employable for the companies. So I really advise any of you who you have time and opportunity to get some experience in luxury industry, you should go for it. Even for three months or six months or four months of a summer, it's always a good experience to learn. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and actually the same person had a two-way question. So the second part of the question was about the, whether it's better to be a Bac plus 3 or Bac plus 4, so to have a bachelor yeah. or a bachelor plus master's. Yeah, we have our program, our master's is a Bac plus science level. So our program is uh, what we call um, accredited by La Confiance des Grandes Écoles, which is an association of the, all the top school in France. And as of this accreditation, we are allowed to have only maximum 30%, 3-0 of Bac plus 3 every year. So the 70% of the class must be Bac plus 4 or Bac plus 5, Bac plus 5. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great. And is it possible to do a uh, formation en alternance? Can they be working no. at the same time? No. no, you don't have time because, you know, you can see the program when you move in one new city every four months, three months, four months in Paris, three months in London or New York in Rome, and then three months in Shanghai. It's impossible to do alternance. Of course, of course. Um, and actually about this, someone was asking uh, whether all the trips are mandatory. Do they have to choose the three cities? Yes. Otherwise, you, you, won't, you won't get the credits. Because when you go to study in uh, one of the partnering, uh, partnering uh, university school, you get the credits from them. You, you are not graduate. You don't get the diploma, but you get credits from the school. So the, the school would give you credits, like grades and credits, and the credits is, uh, get transferred to us. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. But you don't, you, you don't get the degree, the, you don't get the diploma. 
Okay. So if you don't go to one of those three cities, you will not be able to finish the program, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, so a few questions are asking about the coronavirus situation and how it's affecting um, the, the intake and the whole process. And are there lessons online? Well, for this year, it's a bit complicated for us, as you can imagine, because we, we have to cancel the, the, the semester, which where I'm supposed to be in, in Shanghai right now. So it's have been canceled like a month ago. Uh, so this is something that's very exceptional uh, context we are living this year for 2020. But for 2021, when you will be going to, or the next cohort will be going to Shanghai in April 2021, we are expecting that everything will go back to normal because you know you can see in China, they already removed the confinement. The people start to go back to the street and go start their business as usual again. And by the time uh, of April 21, everything will be go back to normal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for the September 21 intake, when should people apply? Uh, for September 21, I think the first session for the application will start, I think, in early December. Okay. okay in early okay. December 2020. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, somebody was asking about the internships, if uh, they can do them in their own country, or does it have to be in the countries of the course? No, you can do anywhere you want, but there must be a company that relate to luxury industry. So uh, we have students like go back to their home country for their internship. It's not, a, it's not a problem at all, but they have to work for a luxury company in their country. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, somebody is an electrical engineer, but is interested in switching to the luxury industry. Is that something you would consider in an application? Yes. This is what I was saying earlier. We have uh, 90 students but coming from very different background, from 22 nationalities, and they come from everywhere in the world, and they have very different backgrounds. We have engineers, we have um, designers, you have architects, we have lawyers, we have uh, scientists. You know, we, uh, I, um, we have, you know, a few years ago, we have one girl. She started a program in September, and three months later, three months later, she got her PhD in pharmacy. You know, she, she became a doctor in pharmacy. And then later on, she did her internship at L'Oreal in, in luxury cosmetics. So this is a very interesting profile uh, that we like to have. Right. So, and any profile is uh, qualified as long as you have a clear idea why you want to change and what is your career objective and career goals. Mm -hmm. Right. Um... Are any of the courses available online? Is there any e-learning that happens or is it all? Uh... Yes, yes, we do have e-learning classes as well because for the first semester, for example, for those who never have any, uh, didn't have any business background, we do have some foundation course in management, uh, online courses that they should do while they, are, they start their first semester in Paris. So mm -hmm. like, for example, foundation of marketing, foundation of uh, accounting, finance, and so on. So these are the foundation course in management that they should do uh, when they, they start the program in Paris. Okay. And those courses are online, yes. Great. Um, people were asking about scholarships. Are there any particular scholarships for international students? And is there... Mm -hmm. Not for international students per se, but it's based on merits. So we do give scholarships um, for candidates who have an interesting profile, a good um, academic records, uh, your, from your CV, what you have done before, and so on. This is some, um, we, and of course, people who have a like, very strong GMAT. For example, we don't require to have a GMAT test. But those who have a very high GMAT score, like the, you've done that for all the school, one mean high GMAT score like uh, 700 and above, then if you have a high GMAT score like 700 and above, you can get um, a scholarship for that because mm -hmm. it means that you are super smart. <laughs> 
Great. And um, could you remind us the cost of the program and what is included in the cost? I guess people are asking if accommodation is included or... Uh, Absolutely not. Yeah, the, co the cost of the program is 34,000 euros for the, the whole program. And that includes only your tuition fees and, uh, and that's it. So what you, you need to budget also your cost of traveling to different cities the cost of living in those cities as well. You, you, you're not from France or from Paris. You have to include you know, accommodation in Paris, accommodation in New York or London or in Rome, and then accommodation in Shanghai, plus your travel tickets, uh, airfare to those cities, uh, and tickets back home if you want to go home during the holiday and so on. Yeah, you have to add those costs into the, and plus, plus the cost of living on those cities, of course. And I need to warn you that the uh, cost of living in New York and London is quite high yeah. in terms of accommodation and also cost of living. You know, so that's why you have to be aware that there would be uh, some substantial cost to, to go to those cities. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so a few questions again about the... Um, work experience so you said of course that it helps if you've worked uh, in the luxury industry if you've done an internship before if you've had any experience in the luxury industry uh, are there any other experiences that you would value um, other experience could be something related to the luxury industry it could be maybe artistic experience uh, because you know luxury is highly related to arts and culture so if you do some work experience related to arts and culture are very important as well. Uh, depends on where you are, but the opportunity to work in those fields, like, you know, would be uh, you work at a museum or in art gallery, or you, you know, you work for any of those type of business would be interesting to have, yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, if somebody is doing a master's already, would they be exempt from GMAT? I think you said that yes. you yeah. look for IELTS anyway. Yeah. yeah, the GMAT is not required, but if you have a high GMAT score, you should submit the, the, the score to us when you apply, and that will give you, uh, you may entitled a scholarship. Mm -hmm. And when I say high GMAT score, it's 700 and above. Great. Um, if you have selected a track, if you've applied to one track, is it possible to change afterwards? When you apply for one of the three tracks, it doesn't mean that you get that track immediately. You, you know, because you, when you apply, when I, we evaluate your application, we don't evaluate your, your choice for the track. So when you get admitted, then we will look into the, and you confirm your, 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 your enrollment then you will, will, will look to your uh, track choice. So, uh, and depends on the track you ask, we will look at your, you know, your profile, your career objective, and how the track would fit your career objective or not. So the, the attribution to the tracks would depend on, on me and on Florence Collet, who is uh, my um, uh, pedagogical operation manager. We both look at each candidate uh, afterwards to see which track fit you best. And we may have to, to interview you uh, later on when for, for those tracks as well. So we, right. that we will confirm those tracks only once you get, uh, when you enroll in the program. Okay, great. Um, a person was asking, so they couldn't finish their application for the year 2020, even though you said that people can still apply until June, if I'm correct. Yes, yes. Um, so they were asking uh, if it will be a problem to do all the necessary procedures since they're an international student uh, before the term begins. Yeah, yeah, of course, that's why you have to apply as soon as possible because when you apply, uh, even you apply now in April, you should be able to get some answers if you complete everything uh, correctly. So you can get an answer within a few weeks from us. So, you, so you give you plenty of time to apply for, you know, visa, student visa, and so on. Especially when we talk about students who are coming from uh, overseas, when the visa application, the student visa application can take a long time. So the sooner you apply, the better for you, that you have more time to apply for and look for accommodation and so on. Mm -hmm. Great. Actually, about accommodation, people are asking if EM Lyon 
uh, helps at all to find uh, places to stay? No, not really. For in Paris, we don't have like um, you know because in, you know Paris is a very competitive market, a very big city for a lot of students, and so the market is very competitive. So we can give you some like um, tips where you look for accommodation. But usually, our students today are very resourceful. They can find you know uh, some students use Airbnb for example, and you go on you know there's one website called Housing Anywhere. Mm -hmm. that would recommend many uh, our students to use that, whether you are in Paris or New York or London, you can use those website. Uh, Airbnb also can be a good opportunity to find because most of the time you stay only for three to four months. So it's a very short stay. So accommodation in some countries, they, they, in some cities, they prefer long-term stay, like one year and above. Mm -hmm. So for, for, for our students, it's a special case. So that's why the sooner you, you get accepted to the program and confirm your enrollment, the sooner you can start looking for your accommodation. But okay. for London, New York, we have also the uh, called a list of uh, accommodation that our past students have been using to find the accommodation. We can communicate that list to the students, yes. So, and Shanghai is really, really easy to find accommodation in Shanghai. The market in Shanghai is very good for accommodation and you have uh, various uh, prices. So some people can find very uh, affordable accommodation. Some can be uh, very expensive, but very nice uh, accommodation. We even have some students in the past stay in a hotel for three months in Shanghai. <laughs> nice. uh, they, they didn't want to bother to look for accommodation. They just rented a hotel room for three months. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So, it, I mean, it, we cannot give you like general advice it depend on your budget and how much you you can spend and so usually in city like shanghai it's very easy to find and rome also relatively easy to find accommodation in rome as well yeah okay great um how long should should people wait for after they've applied how long will they uh usually three to three weeks or nothing on average three okay. to four weeks you get like an answer from us okay great um and again so something more broad uh what do you value the, the most in an application what do you look for in an applicant okay so what i look uh, at what the application first of all you have to do the a series of tests on our application platform some different tests the test you know uh, cognitive tests and logical tests and so on, reasoning tests. So I look at the score of the test you, you do. Uh, I look at um, your background, like what have you done before on your CV, like what experience you have, which school you study, what grade you have. So that's very important to show your academic level. And of course, I also look at your English level. So we, you do have, for doing the test, uh, you apply in the, doing the test, you have written tests in English and oral tests in English. So those tests are very important for me to, to, to assess your English uh, level. So that's very important. You need to have, you know, fluency in, uh, you have to be fluent in English to be able to follow the program. So mm -hmm. these are the very important criteria. And of course, last but not least, your career objective, your career ambition, you know, what are your career goals after the program? What do you like to do? You know, how, how realistic they are, how, how feasible are they? Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I'm going to combine two questions about internships. So uh, yeah. how difficult or easy is it for students to find an internship, first of all? And do you provide, the, you know, does, the, does EM Lyon provide the internship? We don't provide the internship because every student has very different needs in terms of internship, what type of internship with industry, because luxury industry is a huge industry. So we have people who are like passionate about different sector of the industry. So it's not possible for us to provide internship. But what we could do, we can help you to, um, to, to prepare for your, your CV interview. That's what the career coach are there for, you know. And in terms of how easy to find internship uh, the, uh, again to depend on the industry so, so some industries very really hard to find internship because there are not many i give you an example a few years ago we have one student from um, asia he was passionate by yacht the big yacht industry like you know ship and big boat 
and he just wants to work in this industry only. And it's really challenging for him to, uh, to find an internship in that field. And then when he did research, he realized that most of the yacht company are based in Monaco. And they, they required them to speak French to, to be able to work in there. So what he asked me, he asked me to have an extension of six months for his program to learn French. So he came to France for six months. He learned French intensively for six months. And then he applied for internship in those companies. And he got a very interesting internship at one of the major yacht company in Monaco. So this is something that, you know, so when you really want something, you could achieve. And we, with EM Lyon program, would, you know, that would give you a very big, a good asset to your, your, see on your CV. So, uh, yeah, it depends on which industry you are in. If you are working, you know, when you want to work in the fashion industry, like LVMH or Chanel or Hermes or Dior and so on, or L'Oreal, those companies know us. So when you apply, you get already on the top of their preferences. Great. Um, are there chances to, to, of getting a scholarship, uh, even though it's April already, or for the 2020 intake, you've already made your choices? Now, now we still give a scholarship now, but uh, scholarship now would be based on uh, case by case and by, on, based on your application quality. Yeah. So we don't give uh, the first session like in December and Jan, uh, January, we have called an automatic scholarship because we want to, to attract you know, the best applicants early. And, but now we have only scholarship uh, given out only based on requests and based on the quality of the applicants. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so a few people, I'm not sure everybody heard um, everything as, as you were speaking. Uh, a few people are asking about the September 2020 intake. Will it be affected by the pandemic? Well, right now, it's a no difficult one knows. question. Yeah, no one knows. I mean, in theory, we should get out of uh, our confinement by May, but we don't know how long that will last. But we all hope that um, the confinement would be over by May, June at the last. And so September, we can start, you know, our normal life again. So that's what we're hoping. So this is something that is a big question mark for us right now. We don't know exactly when this uh, crisis will be over. And I think no one knows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> about the languages. So you said that... Uh, uh, students have access to French classes and to Chinese classes and to Italian classes, right? No, uh, no, no, there's no, oh, Italian language class? No. Oh, okay, sorry, I misunderstood there's no, you. There's no Italian class, only you have French language and Mandarin classes. Okay, okay. Paris. Um, so, yeah, because one person was asking about the, the Mandarin courses in Shanghai. And another yeah. person was asking about if they can skip to an A to B1 level, an intermediate level for French, if, if they have that already. Yeah, that's why I say in, in Paris, we, because we have uh, more resources, we can offer two levels of French uh, classes, we have, like beginners and intermediate. But if you have already like, you know, more advanced French level, you don't need to to take French classes, you will be exempted. But right. if you have like beginners or intermediate level of French, then we can give you the classes. But if you have like advanced level, you speak fluently French, you don't need those classes. Same for Chinese, if you speak already fluently Mandarin, there's no need for Mandarin classes. And the Mandarin class we offer in Paris only for beginners who start from the, the, the first basic, uh, you know, <laughs> of the Mandarin. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, is there an interview through Skype before being accepted? Is it part of the application process? No, we, we rarely interview by Skype unless we really have a big, big doubt about one candidate. Uh, then we can ask for a Skype interview like uh, on live on Skype. But usually we make a decision based on the tests that you do for the applications. The, 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 all the questions, your answers, and your application, your the, the academic record, and so on. Mm -hmm. 
they should come on back. Wonderful. Um, some people were asking about some details about the online courses you mentioned. Yeah. Which ones are they and uh, how, how do they work? Uh, those online courses, we give you access when you are, you are enrolled in the program, we will give you access to those courses. Uh, usually we open those courses like towards the uh, beginning of uh, September. So you can have access to those courses. You have like online courses like foundation of marketing, foundation of finance, foundation of accounting. And uh, voila. And uh, so these are the uh, foundation of finance as, as well. So these are four courses that you, you, you have to do online. Oh, yes, one course also called a CSR as well, uh, Corporate Social Responsibility, you have to do online. So these are the course online, you can do that anytime you want at your spare time on weekends and you have to complete them. Those management courses, you have to do that um, on, to, to get, you know, like uh, for those who never have business background, of course, those who have business background, you don't need to do that. For this corporate social responsibility CSR course, this one is mandatory for everyone. Mm -hmm. So everyone must complete that and uh, you get credit for that course, CSR. But for the management courses, it's a more, more like a um, support tool that we give to the non-business students to catch up with the, the rest of the class. So they are required course, but they're not graded. You don't get like credit for those management courses. Okay, okay. Um, one person was asking what kind of roles and positions could you be looking at after graduation? Depends on your prior experience. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Prior experience in luxury can be very uh, important asset for you when you graduate because it depends on your skill, your expertise, plus your, your degree, the like master's program at EM Lyon. You can have access to the management level at least. Uh, in France, you have what we call the, the, the system that you, when you graduate from our masters, you are automatically considered as a bac plus cinq. So which is like you have to be uh, considered as a cadre, which means a managerial uh, level. So you, your companies they have like different pay scale based on your your color status. So when you graduate from EM with the back plus five, you mean you are in a status called cap, but you should get like a salary accordingly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, but you know, the country is not the same. So it depends on, uh, on the country you are going to work, but usually the management position, you can have like junior position, junior management, like uh, assistant brand manager or assistant product managers, or some, sometimes if you have good experience, good expertise, you can get a management position right away. Mm -hmm. um, and could you tell us the percentage of graduate students uh, that get a job as soon as they finish? Do you have a percentage? But I don't have the percentage of that because we don't, uh, I don't keep track of that because many of the students, they sometimes they, um, because they do their internship at different time, you know, in theory, everyone should start the internship in July, but many of them prefer to take, after Shanghai, they prefer to take on a holiday, to go home, to say hi to their parents and so on. So they don't start internship until like September, maybe October uh, of the same year. So they don't finish at the same time. So I, we don't have a way to contract, to track like who got a job after the internship or not. Mm -hmm. But we know that, um, and where did you go? Because it's also depend on the country they go. If you, you do internship in France and you go back to your home country, maybe in your home country, there's less opportunity than in France. So it's not easy to get a job and so on. So it depends on each, uh, each, recorder, each person. Mm -hmm. But I would say that the majority of the students get the, the job quite easily, not necessarily in the same company they did their internship, but in other, other companies. We have, you know, many students who finish like the internship at Chanel, end up having a job at uh, Dior or uh, having a job at Louis Vuitton and so on. So it's quite, um, you know, those companies, they, they like to hire people who like, already have experience in, in their competitive companies. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, do you have students that apply with a background with, uh, in hospitality management? Oh, yes. <laughs> we have a lot 
a lot of people are from hospitality background, especially for the Intech 2020. I don't know why, but I think that I know why, because uh, the hospitality industry now, uh, with the traditional, what were traditional uh, luxury goods industry, are uh, merging very strongly. You know, you have the LVMH, which is mainly uh, have luxury goods product like Louis Vuitton, Dior, and so on, uh, have now hotels, right? They opened a big, big hotel, luxury hotel right in Paris by the end of this year. So many groups that are investing in hospitality and hospitality brand branching out to goods uh, products market. So it's very common that we have a lot of hospitality soon, yes. And they are very welcome. Especially we have this, some, 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 some top school in Switzerland applying, we like them very much. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, back on the applications, uh, because of the situation, so if somebody is accepted for the 2020 intake, will it then uh, be, be uh, will, does it then, if, if the 2020 intake, will, I mean, how can I explain? Will it just be postponed until 2021? Will they count as accepted, be counted as accepted? If the student wants to postpone, if they get accepted for September 2020, and they, for any personal reason, they want to, to defer to September 2021, it's possible, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they don't have to reapply it again. You can, you can say, okay, I'm accepted in uh, September 2020, but for personal reason, I prefer to start the program in September 2021, then that's fine. Okay, we great. Keep the spot for them. Yeah, we have every year we have a few candidates like that. Mm -hmm. um, somebody was asking about the early make markers course. Could you elaborate yes. on that for the EM Lyon? Uh, yes. It's a very specific thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's very specific, yeah. We are, because our school is not known for color entrepreneurship and early makers. So we want every student to have some color entrepreneurial early makers uh, mindset. So early makers uh, course, so this course you, you would be working in um, individually and you have to spend time in the color makers lab. We have a makers lab in every campus. We have one in Paris as well. And in the makers lab, you have to to do things that you have never done before. So something that uh, for many of you, you will be feel very um, excited, very uncomfortable sometimes because you will, will want to take you out of your comfort zone. For example, I can give you, for example, an, uh, an idea like, for example, the first uh, time we launched this uh, course like three years ago, our students have to make, to build uh, a drone a drone so basically they they have they receive instruction online they have to to do like um, you know they have to build you know to to uh, to to cut the pieces for the drone we have a laser cutting machine in the lab we have to do you have to print uh, some parts of the drone in uh, 3d printers we have a 3d printers on the lab as well so you have you learn how to use the 3d printers you have to use how to do them laser cutting machine and so on and then you have to build the construct the, the drone by your, your own hands and you have to install a, a motor on the drone and you have to do the programming so you have to make the drone fly with your mobile phone yeah. and if the drone doesn't fly then you fail the course <laughs> so this is very interesting and that at the end you have of course the the, the teacher uh test how, how good your, the drone fly. Yeah, and we have a race between student, how, which one to fly higher and so on. It was really interesting. So this is something that you have never done, that my, many of you have never done that before and, not, and you don't expect to do that in a business school in the first place. So this is an example of how we, we wanted you to learn about, uh, to be early makers. So to, to do something unusual out of the box, uh, to out your comfort zone, and uh and that you will enjoy to, and you get real skill about it right wonderful so, uh, yeah mm -hmm. um about the online test the for during the application yes. uh you said a little bit what it consists of and someone was asking how to prepare for it there's no preparation <laughs> 
because there's no preparation because the online test, the whole idea is to, to measure your ability on the spot. So there's no preparation. So online test is to test your, your, your thinking, your reasoning, your English uh, level, your written English as well, your sp speaking, in, uh, how do you speak English, how to uh, phrase your argument, how to formulate your, your ideas and so on, and how to write in English as well. So all that combined in one single test that lasts between one, and one hour and one and a half. So it depends how much time you take. So uh, usually the, the tests have different parts of the test so you have to complete all of them. And, and then you get a score for each part and you get a score for the final like overall score. And I look at those scores to see how good you are, how smart you are, how, uh, how suitable you are for, for the program. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no, I would say that, of course, that if you get in every test, you fail and you get like the worst score, of course, you will not be admitted because it's, it means that you are not capable of doing the, any basic because some of the score are very important, like reasoning, uh, logical thinking, uh, working in team, and so on and so on. So these are the very important elements that will, go, will make you a good student or not in the program. Wonderful. Um, about visas for international students, so do they have to make applications for the three countries and three cities? Is there any way that the school can help or um, on advice, well, give some advice? For the French visa, for those who are non-European, of course, for the European student, it's not a problem to study in France, but for non-European students, like Asian or American, American and so on, and South American, you have to apply for a student visa. So this is something that you, you, that's why the sooner you get accepted by the school and get the confirmation letter from us, then you can start your visa application process at the French consulate in your country. So it's very straightforward uh, process. So it's not very complicated because you know, those French consulates that we re you know, France receive like thousands of thousands of uh, students every year, foreign students. So that's not a problem. And then when you apply for the student visa for US, uh, for UK, if you are non-EU student, or for, so for China later on, for non-Chinese students, we help you, we, we, ask, we help you with the application, visa application process. So usually what happens is our partner university send us uh, an invitation letter to, to help you with the visa application, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the U.S. student visa is a bit complicated, so uh, that process usually to take like two months or maybe even more than two months to do it. So that's why we, the, usually the process for U.S. visa, student visa start right at the, around end of September. So make sure you get the visa on time to go to the U.S. in January. Great. Um... If you, we spoke a lot about uh, having experience in, in the luxury industry, what about if somebody doesn't have experience in the luxury industry but is highly motivated? Do you consider their application anyway? Yes, of course you, we consider as well. But you need to, to, to show us how you, you are, how, how you are really motivated by the industry. You know, things that um what make you think you are suitable for luxury industry like uh, you have to demonstrate your motivation mm -hmm. and um can you think of some examples that uh, of things that demonstrate a highly motivated individual well one thing that i really hope that none of you would say that for example it, it, i mean in the past we have Candidates who you know say that oh I'm interested in luxury industry because my mom love love luxury. <laughs> yeah, why? Okay, your mom love luxury. How does that affect you? You know, what's your point? So you know, and if you say you are interested by luxury industry, you have to tell us how that interest is translate in your daily life. For example, what do you do about it? You know. So, mm -hmm. and you know, in terms of career goal, do you, you, you want to work in luxury, but do you know what kind of job can you get in luxury? You know, many people say, 
I want to be, you know, uh, such and such in the luxury industry. I want to have such and such position. Yeah, great, but those positions don't exist in the luxury industry. So have you even checked, have you talked to anyone who work in luxury industry to see what really exists in the industry? What job they can get, what job they can have? You know, so that's kind of a sign that show that um, if you know, are you really motivate or not? Mm -hmm. um, more specifically about the course in New York, uh, you mentioned the new design firms. What do you mean by that exactly? New design firms? Well, yeah. this is, we, we, you know, we are in a world when everything, dif different business uh, models have changed. You know, you take example of uh, one example, very everyone knows is uh, called Uber, Uber business, right? Uh, Airbnb. This is a business model that didn't exist about a few years ago. No one knows about this business model. And then someone came up with the, the brilliant idea of creating a business called Uber or Airbnb, right? So this is a typical example of a new business model. So, so new design firms can be also relate to a service design firm and how different type of uh, firm can be created, new form of firm or new, new business model can be uh, applicable in the future. So this is something that, that the professor is really interesting. She's, uh, she's a, a consultant herself. She, she do a lot of consulting in the, all the, in, uh, for the companies. And she teaches that course in um, Boston School Design. And she brings some guest speaker to, and really, this is really course that make you think outside the box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the traditional business model uh, may not be uh, relevant anymore in the future. So this is something that you have to think outside the box and think of the, how the whole you know, world will change and how they will change. Mm -hmm. um, okay, great. So, uh, what is the difference between this program and the high-end master program? Yeah, the high-end brand management program we have in, in China, that program is um, mostly target to um, the, well, regional uh, students, so mostly from China or from uh, all the country in the neighbor of the China. And those, this program, it's, uh, it's a joint, a double degree program for, uh, with the, our partners university called East China Normal University. So this is a joint program, double degree program. So you, you will get double degree when you graduate from this program. So, um, and you have to follow certain courses required by ECNU, East China Normal University, and some courses required by our program. So this is, it's like, um, I would say that, um, hybrid program compared to luxury uh, MSc, luxury management marketing program here. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, the main difference is you don't have to, you don't get to travel to New York or London or Rome with high-end brand management program. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is this Master of Science the equivalent of a Bac plus 4? No, Bac plus 5. Uh-huh. Okay. That's why I, when I said you are back to sign, that means when you graduate from this our program, you are automatically qualified for what I call in French, niveau cadre. They mean mm -hmm. you are managerial position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just having a look. I think we have covered most but uh, let's see if I find something else. There's still about 138 people uh, connecting. Yes, yeah, still, yes. We were, we were over 200. <laughs> yeah. um, so are there examinations in the different cities or is it only a final dissertation? It depends. Um, in New York, there is no uh, like proper exam. You have assessment, different assessment. You have like weekly assessment and uh, the project presentation at the end and so on. Uh, same as London, there's no exam, uh, but you have like what's called continuous assessment. So you have 
weekly work and uh, group work, project work, and so on, individual work as well. And uh, in Shanghai, you have uh, some courses you don't have exams, some you do. Uh, so it depends on the courses uh, that in each city, yeah. In Paris, you have exams. In Paris, or some, or some of the courses you have exams, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, quite a convoluted question here. For somebody who is doing a PGE in another business school, yeah. uh, so in the, they're in their second year out of three, um, then they want to validate their second year, take a gap year, and then join the MSC. Would that be a possibility? No. Would, would the PGE be validated in that case? No. You need to get the, the degree. You don't, we don't just take the, the, the two years in a PGE. You know, PGE is usually a four years program. So you, if you do only two years, you don't have any uh, you know, equivalents. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> um. And usually for the, these people, are not very uh, interesting profile for me because if you give up a program you really start for two years and you want to join our uh, another program that means you are not stable and you don't know what you want so i'm not very keen of taking these people in mm -hmm. okay um so for current students uh what is happening with their Shanghai uh, trips and is everything being postponed then? Right, right now we have, uh, well, we, some for, for those who go, cannot go to Shanghai in April, we postpone, we offer them a possibility to postpone to October. So October, we, we exceptionally, we can run the, the semester in October, November, December in Shanghai for those who want to, to go that time. Or those who don't want to go to Shanghai in October, we offer online courses in this April, online courses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're but offering what, online courses to cover for some yeah. classes. Yeah, but this is an exceptional uh, circumstances because this is something that we never do that before. Mm -hmm. Never did that before because the crisis we are living now is the first time for everyone. So of course, offer yeah. online courses. This is because of like exceptional uh, circumstances. But usually, uh, the classes are all face-to-face, -face, uh, except for the foundation course I mentioned earlier, which is like a more like catch-up, you know, uh, in French called mise à niveau, mm -hmm. the catch-up for those who don't have business background. Those are online courses that we offer for, for non-business background students. Okay. Um, what about when during the internship, does, this, does, the, does the visa need to change or is it still a student visa that people can stay with for, do you see what i mean yes when you uh, for non uh, european student when they come to france to study you have one year visa one year student visa so you start like in september so your visa usually expire end of august the, year, the following year so if you want to read, to stay longer because you want to work in france you have to renew your student visa so you have mm -hmm. to renew your student visa usually in July of the following year, before the, at least one, one month before the visa expire, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. And companies hire, I mean, take on internships, international students as well. Is it more difficult yes. for international students? Well, they did, I mean, those companies that are not discriminating based on nationality, based on, they look at your competency and your language skill. If That's why I say, if you want to work in France and you work for one of the big companies, even there are international companies that have office everywhere, and you work in France, you work in Paris, you would work with the French team, you must speak French. Mm -hmm. That's it. You must speak basic conversational French. You don't have to be, you know, how to write poetry in French, but you need to know how to read email and to reply to email in French. You know? mm -hmm. That's the basic. Great. And does EM Lyon organize events to meet recruiters from the companies that... Uh, yes, that what, yes, in the first semester, in the first semester when you start, in, when you are in Paris, because uh, it's very difficult when you are in London or New York or Rome, you know. So when you are in Paris, that's why we maximize the time you are in Paris. We organize a lot of events. 
we have uh, visits. Uh, we have also company coming to the campus. Mostly com company prefer to come to our campus because uh, you can imagine we have like 90 students and uh, or 100 students. It's not easy for, for us to organize a visit to the companies, you know. Mm -hmm. But companies they prefer to come to visit you, visit us on our campus. So they come, you know, we have, you know, L'Oréal, you have uh, Elevate Image Group, we have uh, Richemont Group. You have all those big groups, they come, and Chanel also, they come every year. They come to present the company to, to, to the students. They present the, what kind of opportunities they, would they have, uh, how to apply for their internship and so on. And usually okay. there are HR people who come to visit us. Right. Um, uh, uh, an administrative question about the official translation for the documents. If somebody is applying at the moment and they can't go to the ministry or to the consulate because of quarantine, is that a problem for their application? Uh, no, not really, but you can submit later on. You, can, okay. you just have to inform us. You have to inform our admission officer that you, 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 then you still have those documents to be translated. So you can do that as soon as possible and you send it later on, that's okay. Okay, great. Um, so if somebody is coming from a bachelor in economics and management, the, do, do, can they uh, skip the e-learning courses or of are they still course. mandatory? Of course, you can skip the e-learning course. But they can do courses, you know, the e-learning the e courses are some courses that if they haven't done it before, if they have never studied marketing, for example, the e-learning module for marketing, you, they must do it. Mm -hmm. they, should do, they should do it because they, if they have studied only economics and management and never learn about marketing, then they should do the e-learning module for marketing, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, okay. Thank you, Professor, for staying for so long. I think uh, 10 more minutes and probably we will wrap up, if okay. that's okay with you. Sure, no problem. I'll just have a look at um, what we have. There are some more new questions coming. There are so many. Oh, really? <laughs> there are so many, yes, to choose from. Um, Any questions that they have been asked? That, that's what I'm looking for, yes. Um, so there's a lot of questions about accommodation, which we covered already, but just to remind people. Yeah, um, for, accommodation in that, for Paris accommodation, I would advise you to apply as soon as possible. So you can get an, an answer from us as quick as possible as well. And then you de when you decide to come to join us and to, to confirm your enrollment, then you can start for looking for accommodation in Paris. The sooner you look for it, the better because accommodation in Paris is very competitive. We have in Paris is one of the top city in France for student life. So there are many universities, many schools in Paris. So that's why the student accommodation is very, very competitive. But there are opportunities, of course, but you have to, 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 be, uh, to decide quickly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um... So a bit of a crystal ball question here. Um, how, how do you think the luxury industries in Europe are going to be affected by the pandemic? <laughs> well, you can guess it would be the same as any other industry. But this one thing that, um, I mean, from my experience, and I, I know this industry quite a lot, and I, when I look at the, the past crisis we, we had, uh, the luxury industry is one of the most resilient industry. So that means that as soon as this crisis is over, the industry will bounce back. Of course, right now, this 2020 will be a very difficult year for everyone, even for the top groups like LVMA, Chanel, and Dior, and, uh, for L'Oreal and so on. Everyone would suffer. But as soon as the crisis is over, the industry would get back and they may even get back higher than before the crisis start. You know, in the past, for example, if you look at the, the last big crisis we had, like uh, in uh, 20, uh, 2008 with the financial crisis in US, start in US and then spread into Europe, the, when the crisis, the, the financial crisis is finished, the whole industry bounced back 
and they bounce back higher than the, the level of the industry when before the crisis. Mm -hmm. So the industry is very resilient. So um, I have very strong confidence that, the, that um, we would get back to normal very soon. And you can start to see now with China, you know, in China, uh, business start to get back to, to normal uh, slowly. And in the next few weeks or few months, everything will get back to normal. And once China start to get back to normal, everything will start to roll out again. Yeah. Um, uh, so for a person who's already ha who already has a bachelor's degree in marketing and management of luxury fashion and design, do you think it makes sense to continue with a master's? No. In, okay. To be honest, no. <laughs> okay, I mean, for, for, the, for someone who did have a master's degree or a bachelor's degree in luxury management and marketing or design in another school, I personally, I don't advise you to apply for our program because there's no, it will be redundant for you. You will learn probably similar topics, similar uh, issues, similar concepts. So will be redundant for you. The best for, for those candidates is to go to work in industry. Advice for those who have really a bachelor or master's degree in luxury and, uh, luxury and management or fashion, whatever, they should go to get for a job. And that would be much better for them than to apply for another master's. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so a person who already did the digital test uh, was asking if it's possible to get a copy of their test because the questions were very interesting and they would like to further investigate them. Um, I'm not sure we, you can get that. Uh, you need to check with um, our admission officer. I'm not mm -hmm. sure that the test, uh, because what I, I mean, what I get is the results of overall result of the test. So if you want to get the, your detail, you need to contact the admission officers if it's possible or not. I'm not sure about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you were saying it's quite time consuming, right? Somebody's asking if they could work and study at the same time. Yes, no. That's the answer is definitely no. Mm -hmm. We had cases and students try to do like a part time uh, job one day in Paris. Uh, it's very difficult because um, the class are scheduled different weeks. Every week is different. So you don't have a regular, you know, uh, we don't, it's not in a, in a primary school, but you have every week, you have exactly the same schedule. Each week is different schedule. You have class maybe on Monday morning on one week and then Monday afternoon the following week and then change all the time. So to have a like part-time, regular part-time job, Unless you do like an evening job in a bar, tending job, you know, in a bar, that might be possible, but usually during daytime, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you look at if people were studying fashion, for example, before, do you look at a portfolio or is it just the test and then no. the application? We're not a fashion school. So what they have studied in a fashion school before is great, but I'm, I, I'm not fashion expert to judge their work on that. So as long as they graduate from that school, which is, we have a lot of, you know, every year we have about, you know, as most about five to 10% of people who are, come from fashion school, from Asia, mm -hmm. from Europe, fashion school. And uh, as long as they, they, they get the degree from those school, there's no reason I'm checking their work on that. Right. Um, what uh, IELTS band do you require? I don't think we, we answered. Yeah, minimum 6.5, minimum. And if you can get seven or higher, it's better. Mm -hmm. Okay. 6.5 is a minimum. If you have get six only, usually it it's means that you're not good enough. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I, would, I mean, seriously, we have some candidates, right? I, I personally think they are very good, interesting candidate, but they still don't get admitted because the English level is not sufficient. And that mm -hmm. is really a pity because uh, if you cannot speak or, you, you know, we have a written test in English in the, among the tests, and you cannot write, you know, a few sentences without making 
grammar, spelling mistakes, then you're not, you're not uh, ready for our program. Because our program, you know, we are teaching entirely in English. You have to write in English, you have to present in English, you have to discuss in English, you have to debate in English or from with the, all the different uh, people from all over the world. And if you can make three sentences in English without making a grammar or spelling mistake, then who who's going to be debating with you? Who <laughs> going to want to work with you? Who want to work with you as a group member? You know? Of course, of course. Uh, what about other uh, exams like the TOEIC or the Tajmaj? Does that help the application? No. No. We, language tests, yes, language like I test, that's really important. Uh, but the Tashmash and also the, the GMAT is optional. But if you get, you should submit your score if you have a very good score. If not, this doesn't help much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what about for the scholarship application? If somebody has already applied to the program, can they still make the scholarship application or is it too late? It's too late now. Mm. You have to apply when you, you apply for scholarship when you submit your application. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, do you have any books that you would recommend reading up for on these topics? Oh, many books. Um, <laughs> well, they, they depend on your field of your interest. I mean, this is something that very um, depends on each person. If you are interested in luxury in general, there's like tons of like information you can read online uh, or you can watch YouTube, you know, YouTube, they have many uh, videos about luxury industry, the, the designers, uh, the, the, uh, even the, what the, the, some of the top managers, for example, I've been watching uh, recently some uh, new, uh, some videos that I, on YouTube about Bernard Arnault, for example. You type in some key names on YouTube, you will see a lot of videos on them. Uh, you can write, you can read books about different fields. You look, you are interested in fashion. You can read about fashion. You can read about um, the designers. You can visit museum. You know, those who are in Paris, for example, but right now we cannot visit yet because it's confinement. But one day, you, if you have the uh, opportunity, you should visit you know, different museum, like a fashion museum or the Saint Laurent Museum in Paris. Uh, you know, so there are so many in things that relate to luxury that you can learn from. Mm -hmm. so and many museums are doing online uh, yeah. exhibitions as well. Yeah, some yeah. online uh, exhibitions. You can just go to look at them, you know. And that's developed your interest, your, your knowledge of industry and your, uh, you know, luxury is not about the bling bling, you know, it, it's about <laughs> culture, about arts. So you have to need to know a lot about that as much as you can. And of course, you can learn about your own culture as well, your own arts of your own country as well. It's very important. Wonderful. And maybe one last question, maybe a secret one. How many students are you still looking for for the 2020 intake? Uh, we don't have the number. You know, the, right now, you know, we, the, if, if we have several sessions of recruitment, so each session we do, do accept you know, the best one each time. So we don't have like, and of course, you know, some students got accepted, but they didn't, at the last minute, they didn't want to join us because they, they prefer to join another school. So we cannot know exactly the number of how many we got until you 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 confirm your enrollment with us so it's difficult to to okay. tell you. but um as long as you you have a good profile i mean there's a chance still high we Excellent. don't have any like for each session of recruitment we don't have like a split quota you know we say okay this session we take only 10 or 20 or 15 we don't have that we just accept as long as the, the candidates are qualified Wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much, Professor Fan. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Julia. Thank if you, very you have much. a last piece of advice, and I would like to remind all our participants, first of all, to thank everyone for being so many and for sticking around for so long and asking so many interesting questions. Thank you so much, Professor Fan, for answering them uh, so thoroughly. Um, this was Ian Lyon's webinar about the MSc uh, in luxury management and uh, marketing. 
um, and this was Professor Fan, who is the head of the program. If you have a last piece of advice for our participants and uh, your applicants, thank you very much. Well, my, my last advice, first of all, I'd like to thank you. Thank all of you for attending this webinar and asking very interesting questions, very relevant questions. I really appreciate that. And my only advice to you is um, think about why you want to join the luxury industry. And think carefully about that because the luxury industry is very attractive industry, but it's also a very competitive industry. So you have to make sure that you really want to be in it, you know, and you have to you build it out like, um, you know, uh, you make yourself ready for the industry. So you learn, you read, you listen to, you watch, you visit, you know, things, everything related to luxury that make you a stronger, a better uh, future manager in luxury. Okay. Wonderful. So, Thanks again, Professor Fan. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye, everyone. See you next time.